Hi Shrikant. Hi da. What's up? I think much I spent uh, three hours in traffic today. Where? Going from South Bangalore to North Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> got stuck in MG Road. Got stuck in Brigade Road. Got stuck on Osur Road. Okay, Every that seems year. to be the normal day for any any Bangalorean. That yeah. seems to be a normal day. So that brings me to the question: What's wrong with uh, Bangalore's traffic? So uh, the uh, basic thing is that uh, the the question you asked is simple, but the answer is quite complex. One of the factors is the road density, which is the amount of road that has per square kilometer. Mm. Uh, Bangalore fares pretty low in that. The the last time I remember your study was done in two thousand and fourteen. Bangalore's road density was somewhere around eight point two kilometers, whereas okay. uh, Delhi was at twenty one point six. Mm. You know the the that itself is a huge thing because when you have roads, uh, the when you have more road, uh, higher larger road network, that uh, automatically uh, relieves congestion because it's uh, it's like saying you have a uh, a uh, no a narrow pipe versus a larger diameter pipe. Mm. You can relate to how much water flows in the two pipes. that's pretty much what is happening so bangalore's primary issue is that it has way too many vehicles okay. and uh, that is a direct consequence of the fact that the city has grown very fast and the administration has uh, not caught up with the speed at which the city is growing at the same time what is happening is that growth is not planned at all we are seeing like extremely tall uh, towers coming up on narrow roads you have suddenly you find a new housing project on a two lane road in a locality which is not well served by public transport mm. and then that's it next minute you once the project is complete and occupied you have 300 more cars pouring into that road okay so that itself is your primary issue the second thing is bangalore is a radial city what is a radial city a radial city is a city which is whose growth is uh, You know, in the form of a circle. Okay. Bangalore is essentially one large circle. Okay, Bombay, Mumbai, Chennai, Chennai are uh, part is more same. of more of uh, linear cities. Okay. Mumbai especially is a completely linear city on a north-south axis. Mm-hmm. So what happens is in a radial city, or uh, you have a city center, and then the city grows in all directions, and therefore you will have an inner ring road, outer ring road, peripheral ring road, satellite ring road, and. Mm-hmm. So on till you reach a point where the ring road will probably connect uh, uh, Bellary in the north <laughs> to Chennai and then go to Kanyakumari and Mangalore and come back. <laughs> But uh, the primary issue with Bangalore uh, when it comes to traffic is the fact that you have very few main roads that can actually carry the load, mm. and where you have these main roads, you have way too many uh, establishments on the road itself, which uh, So all of these establishments, like outer ring roads, primary problem is the fact that there are so many IT parks there, which are feed, uh, which feed into the road, okay. and the road is unfortunately not able to handle that uh, the capacity of uh, the number of vehicles that are pouring into it. Hmm. So the first thing is you will have have to figure out a way to build. You will have. You can't just say that you know you shouldn't be building more roads. You should look at uh, uh, only rail. You will have to build more roads somewhere. But the question is, uh, where do you build those roads and how do you build them? Mm. So the easiest one thing which you noticed is if you look at outer ring road itself, you notice that the traffic congestion. Even if you take it, the fact that uh, you have uh, what do you call it, the IT parks are located on the east of the city. You see. relatively less congestion on the western part of outer mm-hmm. ring road mm-hmm. one primary reason for this is the presence of nice road okay which acts as a peripheral ring road as an access controlled road connecting at least tumkur road to hosur road so at least that section of uh, the city outer ring road is got less traffic because a huge amount of your vehicles are taken off of the road okay so the f- easiest solution would be to finish the peripheral ring road Mm-hmm. Which has been pending for God knows how long now, mm-hmm. because once that is completed, what there is a there is a Bangalore peripheral peripheral ring road project something like which that, is right? under BDA, which has been stuck for uh, various reasons, mostly relating to land acquisition. Okay, because uh, BDA has been proposing a certain uh, 
a fixed share of how much land will be returned to the original landowners as mm-hmm. uh, developed land which the uh, landowners are not uh, okay with okay i think land acquisition is a problem land acquisition is a big country. problem everywhere especially in urban areas where land rates are ex- uh, exceedingly high mm-hmm. now uh, the peripheral ring road is stuck because of this but uh, and therefore you see tend to see outer ring road on the east getting uh, clogged very often mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that is a major artery beyond that there is no uh, major road mm-hmm. but uh, part of this problem would have could be alleviated if uh, so the karnataka road development corporation somewhere in uh, 21 or 2022 uh, or maybe earlier had started this project of uh, four laning certain state highways in the vicinity of bangalore city uh, like I know that the part of it is SH thirty five, which connects your uh, entire white field, Vartur, mm-hmm. uh, Gunjur, all those mm-hmm. to Atibale, mm-hmm. and then from there to Anekal, Jigni, Banargatta. So it's a, it's a circular network which goes up to Hosakote on one side, and from there goes to Devanagari, from there goes to Nellamangala, and comes back. Okay, nice. So it's this is a basic four lane road. It's nothing fancy, nothing. It's just a basic four lane road. But if this is completed. it will take away a significant chunk of uh, the traffic which is currently using uh, roads uh, closer to the city mm-hmm. away from them the second is traffic that uh, traffic the main reason for congestion is when you see too many vehicles using the road at the same time so one solution to this uh, this was uh, done for a different reason but in uh, 2015 when uh, 15 16 when the delhi government began their uh, odd even plan mm-hmm. which i would never advocate <laughs> that has more issues mm-hmm. but uh, the greater noida administration came up with this uh, uh, this one uh, plan they asked markets to shut down at different times so that you would have a staggered uh, shutdown and therefore not every vehicle would be on the road at the same time okay how did the establishments react to this it was partially successful mm-hmm. but if you can figure out a way to do this especially in the case of bangalore it companies have a lot more flexibility mm-hmm. it uh, the flexibility that it has is probably its biggest advantage so you can and since now companies are asking uh, for uh, yeah. ending work from home hi they are shifting to a hybrid mode no they have asked for the hybrid mode also to be ended like okay. tcs has asked uh, i think in chennai at least they have asked for people to come back and a uh, lot of people are like uh, now getting tensed over getting stuck on mm. omr there mm. but i think this will probably be uh, this will uh, obviously compound the matter mm-hmm. so uh, staggered timings would ob- go a great way in helping this one to is even schools if they can find a way to have staggered timings it would uh, help i i know when i studied in mumbai uh, my school started at uh, 6:15 in the morning and ended at 12:15 in the afternoon okay which school was that podar oh, okay and uh, our icsc section had a different timing the cbsc section had a different timing mm-hmm. so and like other schools like i know some schools started at 7 and ended at 1 uh, some schools started at uh, Eight and ended at two. Mm-hmm. So if you can have, if maybe this can be done at a zonal level, uh, you can you know like mm-hmm. each zone in the city has different uh, timings. I'm not sure how the uh, schools would react to it, but uh, if if you could find a solution to it, having vehicles at a different time of the hour on the road would one bring down the congestion by a big amount. That is, in my view, a simple yet effective method to solve the issue. but it's only one of the multiple issues that are at hand so uh, one more issue that plagues the city's roads unfortunately is the quality of the road itself now beyond those the sections which have been white top which have been done reasonably well mm-hmm. there are large sections of roads in the city especially the asphalt roads which are in shambles okay does does white topping really help white topping the thing is concrete basically it reduces the maintenance uh, of a road because uh, the requirement for maintenance because it doesn't get damaged that easily okay that's also problem during the rainy season right that like the concrete the, doesn't absorb the water. correct 
but uh, but then if you look at it coastal cities like mangalore mumbai cochin hmm. these have all pioneered concrete roads they hmm. they have had concrete roads for more than two decades and the flooding hasn't like increased because of the concrete the uh, uh, flooding has increased because the rainfall has increased not because of the concrete <laughs> so you have to obviously relay the drains that is one big big problem here is you see that drains are laid and they end somewhere there is no connection between two drains the drain is at a different level from the road in fact sometimes is this is the level of the road and the drain entrance to the drain is at this point so where will the water go okay. so you have uh, a lot of these issues uh, you need a little coordination between bbmp bwssb bda all these guys and uh, but the surface of the road especially especially on asphalt roads is in many places in a very bad state so if you are able to provide a stable surface one which doesn't get eroded within 3 months of being laid people will not have to break every now and then whenever they spot a pothole they can continue smoothly and if you are continuing smoothly congestion will come down and also the road will be significantly safer because when you suddenly abruptly break when you see a pothole the person behind you or adjacent to you may not have the same uh, reaction and might end up hitting you so that's a uh, cause for concern because accidents are problematic mm-hmm. and on that road if you expect an ambulance to make it there that's another uh, unfortunate thing so if you are if the biggest problem is get the roads smooth if you can do that that would nothing would beat that that would bring that would actually i'm i'm not uh, i can't put a number to it but i would say that would go a long way in sorting out issues okay and then comes one rather interesting thing is the bus stop placements in bangalore okay. a lot of bus stops are placed right next to a signal mm-hmm. so that eats up one lane and other vehicles are forced to converge and go around it you you think that the b track or some organization which plans is, which plans all these uh... so the bus stops in so uh, 2000 eight when i shifted to the city that was the bus stops were just at the signal 2009 they set up bus stops across the city they put up bus shelters across the city they placed them around 100 meters away from the signal which was a great move because that's how it is generally in most places mm. but what happened the bus shelter is there people are waiting there the bus is still stopping at the signal and going and there's no coordination between uh, the two so okay. bus stops are built by the bbmp mostly or bda buses are and uh, bmtc has uh, at least it used to be that i'm not sure now but uh, still there is again lack of coordination between mm-hmm. the two so the bus stops if they are placed away and bd bmtc tells you their drivers ki bus you park there i mean you stop the bus there and not at the signal or else I'll, you will be penalized mm-hmm. bus drivers will automatically go there two is people also should be told don't stand at the bus signal go stand where the bus stop is yeah especially yeah. if like in the rajarajeshwari signal uh, right next to the gopalan arcade right after the signal there is a bus stop correct everybody once like, now when in peak hours you have multiple buses coming all of now all of those buses stand in a line over there mm-hmm. not only does it eat away this road but the intersecting road also the vehicles are stopped they get a green signal but there is a bus blocking the route yes yes so that uh, again leads to a huge uh, uh, queue behind there okay so my next question is uh, like how do we plan the public transport system to uh, serve bangalore better like is is the public transport system planned well in bangalore like the rail the bus the roads so the public transport system in bangalore is uh, again it's operating in silos mm-hmm. your buses uh, the metro and okay once the suburban rail comes up and okay that's that, a, that's a big question once it comes <laughs> up i i have faith in it coming up <laughs> once that comes up the three of them have to work together the three of them have to uh, be in sync now uh, for example i am i'll take an example of uh, mumbai because i have traveled extensively by buses when i was a kid there a lot of buses in mumbai are short distance buses that connect the locality to the nearest railway station from where people get off and switch to 
the local trains okay the railway means the suburban local, the suburban, suburban train the local okay. trains now you also have uh, this uh, the uh, newer the mini buses that were launched uh, in 2019 the ac mini buses many of them terminate at uh, the metro stations also mm-hmm. so this gives you uh, basically the p- point is the buses don't form the primary commute the train does the bus just takes you to the train and if you are running a mini bus it reaches a larger it can get into areas where the regular bus cannot get mm. now in bangalore especially in the newer areas which were added in 2005 after it began it went from bangalore managar palike to brahad bangalore managar palike lot of these uh, outlying areas which were villages earlier they have remained more or less the same they are still villages the roads there are still narrow it's just that a few high rise apartments have come up there so there are lots of cars in the region mm. and the buses in these regions still go to your same old uh, term kempegowda bus station kr market shivaji nagar lot of the people living there don't work there uh, go have to go there okay they may work in an electronic city or itpl or outer ring road or in the airport side or where, wherever the it sectors are so these areas because they are underserved need to completely uh, change how they are operating so the current this hub and spoke model which bangalore uses is basically it's like a, a giant clock mm-hmm. at uh, this is i had written this uh, as a blog post several years ago where i described bangalore as a clock with uh, each of the major roads bellary road old madras road mm-hmm. old airport road banargatta road and all as spokes of a clock and uh, buses going in these directions one set of buses on outer ring road one on inner ring road one on quad road and a few buses that uh, breach these norms and cut through different routes mm-hmm. but the point is most of them still treat the central business district in the uh, city center as their hub which is your uh, kempegowda bus station kr market Gandhi and all so that also has to change i'm not saying completely dismiss that part but you can start with say if you are in uh, parts of uh, between mysore road and kanakpura road or kanakpura road banargatta road there are lots of people here who travel towards itpl or electronic city now you also have a nice road in the middle you also have uh, some of these other roads in the back you can run try running volvo buses from these regions to there you can the, the thing is i think uh, they are already running some buses by right, running the numbers are very less. few very few and for example there is a th- bus number 378 which goes from kengeri to electronic city it connects kosur road kanakpura road banargatta road and mysore road in the outskirts now you need one more of that which goes slightly closer to the city okay. one more which comes closer to the city so that you and you need to have uh, more uh, ac buses as well mm-hmm. in fact uh, my my perception of public transport has changed a lot uh but a decade ago i'm sure you remember we had these uh, we had four different types of buses in the city you had the regular bus you had the pushpak you had the suvarna and then you had the vajra mm-hmm. we each with a different fare slab and uh, this one i think that would that works best because uh, uh some people will not take a bus because of the crowd that's something you can't uh, do i think they, about. W- people who preferred vajra have shifted to metro correct so the people who prefer the vajra have shifted to metro the people who are at the suvarna level have shifted to vajra so you need to have different buses okay. with different and sections all the ladies have shifted to the bus <laughs> that is i mean i'm not going to comment on that because no 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 i i i require your comments on the free bus scheme but anyway we'll we'll finish the public transport uh, okay system so the problem is your bus services don't serve the c- city optimally they serve mm-hmm. and the system is still operating in a you know slightly old uh, 1980s model everything going to majestic that needs to diversify you need to have more diversification where do the buses go and obviously you need to increase the number of buses because the city has around 6300 buses running on some 5500 routes that is not enough for uh, a city like bangalore especially when bangalore has only around 40 to 40 kilometers of uh, metro or more i think in another 6 months it will become 90 is what i ah okay i'm no i'm not sure of the numbers but it it will be the third largest metro network yes, in the country yes, yes. 
but it's still like compared to delhi it's nowhere <laughs> i mean compared to delhi no other city is come there. on delhi started 10 years 20 years before 20 the, years uh, before but uh, the thing is delhi metro serves as an example of how you can effectively build a metro and be successful at it okay bangalore metro when it was launched uh, was, and delhi metro when it was launched both were identical the delhi metro launched between shastri nagar and shahdara or some place in 2002 it was a joy ride for people mm-hmm. bangalore metro opened up between mg road and bypanelli in 2011 it was a joy ride people it became a serious mode of transport only after it started connecting to the majestic and uh, vidhan sauda kaban park etc yeah. when it, when the first phase we became fully operational that's when it became a serious m- mode of transport because then you could go from one corner of the city to another mm-hmm. so uh, most cities are like that because when, when they open it as a short stretch it, it starts out as a joy ride people get accustomed to the new system after which it opens up a huge network okay the only city which probably i guess escaped this was mumbai because mumbai metro one when it opened it just became a connecting point between two the western and central line yes. so it was super successful you can't expect that to happen in every city because not every city is the same mm. so bangalore metro and bmtc have to work closer with each other the first thing that bmtc needs to do on its part is one treat metro stations as terminals run buses which don't your bus like i remember at one point in time there was this uh, feeder bus that was coming from domlur to bypanelli station see i travel travel by metro so the only feeder bus i see is the kabban park uh, metro station to vasant nagar correct only helping you will see you will see you will see one bus i will see one bus at another station that's all okay and the bus is also not there uh, every time i get down it will be there once it will be after that next time you go you will be wondering where the bus is <laughs> no so there there was this metro feeder i remember from domlur to bypanelli on its route it would touch indra nagar it would touch sv road and it would touch bypanelli three metro stations on the route mm-hmm. there was no need for that they could have just terminated it indra nagar and brought it back would have finished its trips faster and taken more people to this on the point of it is to get people to the nearest station there is no point need for a metro feeder bus to go touching 3 4 stations at one go okay so one is bmtc should proactively start mapping out where they can run buses to from a metro station and provide quick trips to the metro station that is one mm-hmm. two is bmtc needs to start guys go no it's progress process of completely going digital with the national common mobility card okay uh, do they have a qr code now they right. don't have they have an app called they use an app called tomok where you can buy uh, the bus pass alone mm-hmm. but uh, beyond that you can't do much okay uh, delhi and mumbai have gone completely digital at least uh, best in mumbai has gone digital you can buy a ticket on both with an app or with the for- card the ncmc works in buses it works in uh, the metro it works smoothly in fact one of my friends uh, he bought uh, an ncmc in uh, bangalore it works beautifully in mumbai now if you have a common card for commuting between the two people will want to take the bus because okay. you don't have to like pull out change from your pocket every time okay that's a pain that's a very big pain that is one thing that is one thing i totally do not like is chennai it's a big problem you you know like you you can pay for a metro ticket either with a paytm or you can swipe the card and then after that when you ticket under the bus you have to start hunting for change <laughs> same thing in bangalore the first thing get the card that people will automatically these are small things that automatically you know start nudging people towards adopting the public public transport, transport. two or three which our point three three <laughs> i have lost track now the like the public transport system and bank yes <laughs> coordination should also extend to timings your buses should land at the station before the train leaves not after the train leaves mm. this will be a big tra- problem because you can't control the road traffic but if you can control the road traffic to an extent where people prefer to take a bus maybe it will work so everything is dependent on another factor 
So that's one never ending loop. So so the the main thing lacking here is the co- the coordination between BMRCL, BMTC, Bangalore Traffic Police, BVMP, BDA or every agency out there. Okay. We'll 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 have we'll having a CEO type office who controls all these other organization help uh, in this might help problem it might help it uh, i am not sure how because uh, unified transit authorities are uh, still missing in india and i have not traveled abroad so i don't know okay. how they function it may not work also it all depends on the a lot of it depends on political will power and okay again again another bro- bureaucrat will come and sit correct. there and so instead of having to deal with 10 bureaucrats you deal with one bureaucrat <laughs> who will in turn boss over 10 bureaucrats okay so uh, it's a it's a complicated process we don't know if it will work or not i mean it's it's definitely worth trying but again it has to be done in a way that because BMTC is entirely under the state government BMRCL is uh, joint venture between the state, state and the center so you have to ensure that there is uh, you know that uh, all the this ones are represented uh, represented all your even your city is represented like for example uh, as you go towards the north mumbai uh, maharashtra gujarat the bus transport comes under the municipal corporation so in those cases if you're going to put up a unified uh, a entity you'll have to ensure that the state the city and the center are represented in the new body and even in uh, bangalore you will have to involve the bbmp mm-hmm. because the bbmp is the one running the roads okay so you will have to involve all bodies mm-hmm. so and of course i mean you have to involve the bbmp because it's the first rung of government for the people okay so that is one thing but if they are able to get it done there is nothing like it okay so the lack of coordination between public transport is probably going to be the biggest uh, is the biggest hindrance mm-hmm. once you get that coordination it will make things much better to give you an example uh the purple lines uh, metro station that is uh, sangoli rayana metro station mm-hmm. opened up in 2016 but there was no way to reach the main krantivira sangoli rayana railway station from there without trespassing on railway property and getting a fine for i think in around 2018 the bmrcl finally submitted a design to south southwestern railway to build a bridge connecting the metro station and the railway station okay i remember the long bridge the long bridge okay. that comes to platform number yes, 10 yes yes that thing that bridge was uh, initiated 2 years after the railway station opened up oh my god so both swr swr could have sensed an opportunity to sell more platform tickets vmrcl should have also done something but both of them woke up 2 years after the station opened up maybe swr was uh, enthusiastic about uh, collecting more through fines <laughs> because that's what was happening the first few months people were clueless because there was no signage no nothing they just walked onto the railway land and there was a guy waiting with a challan book for them so the government bodies have to first wake up and start coordinating with each other okay each of them sitting in their own uh, world uh, with zero coordination you will have problems what are your thoughts on this free bus keep personally i am not in favor of uh, free buses for uh, is it because you are a man no <laughs> i am it's not because i am a man <laughs> i am not in favor of uh, it because i think only uh, people from bpl families should be uh, given free transit uh, transport people from bpl families and uh, senior citizens and uh, divyangjan cuz what happens is uh, at the end of the day public transport is also a scarce resource and when you give ac- free access to something which has scarcity people will use it for the sake of using it so i am saying this because when i was a college student i had a travel as you like bus pass which allowed me to travel on any non ac route and i spent more time in buses than i did in college mm-hmm. because i could do it now the minute that bus pass expired i was in class so this is one uh, problem that is expected to happen two is 
if someone can afford a ticket okay not just afford a ticket if someone is in a position where they can easily afford a ticket why shouldn't they pay for it because at the end of the day are you saying that a, a woman who's from a well off middle class family cannot afford to buy a ticket while a male from a lower class family or a below poverty line family has to pay for a ticket so that uh, the, the whole consideration is should be based on their affordability not on the basis of who they are okay so so in bangalore it was uh, like introduced recently right so when from when congress government came in right so in delhi it has been there for last 3 4 years right and so, it has been in tamil nadu for the last 2 years okay so like how 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 is delhi and chennai faring i don't know how it impacts the organization because i have not uh, looked into it that much uh, but i do know in tamil nadu the government set up uh, dedicated funds for this but i'll t- i'll tell you what happens on my journey back home from office or to office in p cars okay, so the free tickets are avail- applicable on the regular buses not the pre- uh, deluxe buses or the ac buses mm-hmm, yeah. So for me the fare is simple it's 6 rupees on a dela- uh, regular bus 13 on a deluxe bus and 15 on an ac bus not much but what happens is, is the f- regular bus is full because you have women with free tickets you have uh, school students and your senior citizens these three categories have uh, subsidies so they get onto the bus and uh, but the number of buses have also gone down so people are hanging onto the bus Okay. So at any point in time you will actually see if you're waiting at the bus stop you'll actually see a bus coming treating towards this side with people hanging like gunny bags. That's how bad the situation is. And so those people who want to commute who have to pay for a ticket end up having to take the deluxe bus which is equally crowded. Mm-hmm. They have to pay more than double because the fare difference between the regular and the deluxe bus in Chennai is double. or else you have to wait and for you know based on your luck if you get an ac bus that is also equally crowded because that's 15 rupees minimum fare and people get onto that so because uh, so this one it puts an unwanted uh, unwarranted strain on the bus itself because the buses are not designed to carry that load of passengers okay two is it eats heavily into the finances of the uh, transport corporation tamil nadu has not bought new buses in the last i think since 2019 in fact uh, if you look at the tender it's been cancelled some 13 times or something <laughs> they are not able to purchase new buses at all and uh, they are living on those old rickety buses so this is how it is going to happen everywhere and the thing is what happens eventually is uh, like many complaints that i have heard in bangalore from maids and all is that bus drivers don't stop for when they see only women at a bus stop anymore okay so uh, this is not this is not something that a bus driver should be doing because his job is to how pick do, up how everyone. does it matter to a bus driver if if the bus is khali he might as well correct. take some passengers in like correct ah but in many cases they just don't stop why they see a woman on the uh, on a bus stop they don't bother stopping they just continue so a lot of people have complained about this okay and this is causing an un- unwanted strain on the uh, bmtc's finances it is also uh, disincentivizing other people from taking a bus because it is now crowded mm-hmm. the more crowds but i mean more crowded the crowd in public transport is something we usually be happy about mm-hmm. but uh, unfortunately the public transport the transport corporation is not generating any revenue and it has to generate revenue because it's only then that it can that any transport company can maintain their fleet they can maintain their buses they can uh, pay their staff salaries on mm-hmm. time otherwise it all comes back and lands upon the taxpayer so we can't do anything about that so that is one thing so i am in principle against uh, free buses okay. because unless it is to people you know like senior citizens uh, bpl families uh give subsidies to school students i don't say anything wrong with that i i have uh, i took up uh, the subsidy that we were given for college buses college uh, students and it worked well so give subsidies to students mm-hmm. and people who can afford it let them pay for their ticket okay 
I mean, if I can afford it, why should I get a free pass? Simple. Recently, even in the Karnataka elections, a much talked about topic was the Bengaluru Mysuru Expressway. Correct. Like, is it really useful? People have also raised concerns about the safety aspects of the route. Right. So, like, uh, who? Like, is it helping people? Okay, so one first point is uh, even NHA has clarified this that the Bengaluru Mysuru Expressway is not an expressway. It is okay. essentially it is essentially a signal free national highway. It is not an expressway. It does not access control. Okay, what what is the difference? Access controlled roads are where you can only enter at select points, and those points are usually told. You will have a dedicated ramp feeding into the road and feeding out. This one is not. It's it's a signal free road, which means you can enter it and exit it at. Uh, it's not controlled. Uh, expressways are also fenced off to prevent uh, wrong side entries and uh, this one cattle from uh, mm-hmm. uh, crossing over. It's essentially it's a it's a green field. It's a brownfield upgrade of an existing uh, state highway turned national highway. Uh, it, it's basically the same as a six laning of many other highways across the country. So the expressway is a misnomer. Okay. The NHA had clarified does, does this. Does MP Pratap uh, Simha know about this? I hope he does. <laughs> because uh, I, I remember he once said, uh, I got a 10 lane expressway to my city. I remember that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is one thing that is important. As far as safety is concerned, the primary problem with that is, yes, because it's not an expressway, there are hundreds of places from where vehicles can enter and exit illegally. And that causes a lot of problems. And uh, and they have totally like banned two-wheelers and other yes. three-wheelers and all such things. But still accidents are happening. So a lot of these accidents are if the road is not been designed properly. Okay. The road has to, the road, the surface of the road has to be designed properly. The roads, uh, uh, exits have to be designed properly. Curves have to be designed properly. A lot of, there is a lot of... Uh, a in, uh, input on this. So, if those are not designed properly, you cannot uh, expect a route. Look, how is how has it happened on the Mysuru ex- like Bangalore Mysuru signal free corridor? I cannot say because I have not yet taken this road. Unfortunately, okay. I wanted to last month, but uh, didn't get the chance. Uh, but it has. I would say I don't know if it has helped, but I would say it will definitely help in a long way uh, for. Uh, the southern region, uh, southern Karnataka, because uh, Bangalore Mysore is what about 150 kilometers apart. It used to take f- uh, four hours, sometimes five hours to reach. Mm-hmm. Especially on Sundays. Yeah, it was madness on weekend. Especially like coming back coming back on a Sunday yeah. was horrible. Oh, wow. So uh, one, it has made Mysore more accessible to Bangalore, and. Uh, given the constraints with expanding Mysore's airport Mm -hmm. and also the fact that Mysore is growing as another uh, IT city. So my only question is, see, uh, like giving such a good road from Bangalore to Mysore, like, like, like who are the people like being helped here? Like the people of Mysore. Okay. It basically brings Mysore closer to Bangalore. So, if uh, KSRTC can run, I think they're already running those electric buses, AV Power Plus. Mm-hmm. If they can run a few more uh, these high-speed buses, essentially you're making, you know, start it from Kengeri Metro, take it to Mysore. Essentially, you are making Mysore, like, you know, a satellite of Bangalore. Okay. Because you can do it in about uh, 120 minutes, that's two hours. So this is what my friend used to tell me. He he is from Abu Dhabi. He used to tell me instead of, it's difficult to get a flight ticket to Abu Dhabi. You land at Dubai, take a bus, sit in it for two hours and go home. Mm-hmm. Apparently a lot of people do that. Mm-hmm. And in fact, in Mumbai, Pune also, Pune airport is another uh, uh, dark story in India's infra history. <laughs> so a lot of people, including me, you know, if you had to go to Pune, land in Mumbai and take a Shivneri to Pune. That's where the express was a beautiful thing. Uh, this is doing the same thing to Mysore. So, and I, in my view, I don't think we need uh, that many airports also in this country. 
so every 150 kilometers there is an airport right or e- is it a rule that there are, there are like there, there is no rule on it but uh, there the uh, the concession agreement that bangalore international airport had was that there would be no airport within a 150 km radius for uh, 35 years uh, 25 years mm-hmm. from when the uh, current kempegowda airport mm-hmm. was uh, made operational in 2008 the only exception to this was for mysore and hassan both of which f- fall just at the edge of that 150 km radius but otherwise uh, which is why hosur airport was stuck and a similar agreement was there in with gmr for uh, hyderabad airport is why bidar airport was stuck okay so unless they gave an exemption uh, the airport gave an exemption the uh, another airport cannot come up but rather than building another airport in uh, maybe bangalore can get a second airport you know like uh, delhi is getting a second on a jaywar uh, mumbai is getting one in navi mumbai navi mumbai uh, london has two airports uh, new york has uh, New York alone has two airports the New York med- region has there's one in Liberty New York and all so you have you have different uh, airports uh, large cities have multiple airports Chennai is now getting its second airport in Parandur so Bangalore maybe can get a second airport is which mm-hmm. would uh, be fine where do you think the second airport will come i plan to buy some real estate there i am guessing it would probably be coming up somewhere in the south south as in kanakpura Oh. probably that oh. side probably because uh, that is only part of the south that lies within karnataka otherwise it goes straight into tamil nadu in which case uh, you can buy a land in hosur i think a uh, lot of bangalore based developers have property there okay so you can try, try something okay. there there's also uh, it's also cheaper okay but uh, you won't get the bmtc volvo is there <laughs> but uh, it, yeah a second airport to bangalore will definitely be needed at some point maybe in the next uh, 15 years or so mm-hmm. we have we had one hal airport right the old hal uh, airport uh, reoperationalizing hal airport is probably the best idea but i'm not sure hal will do that okay that is uh, that again create a lot of traffic problem that will create a lot of traffic problem and that road feeds into outer ring road east again and uh, but uh, it will also be problematic because hl probably does not want to because that's where they test a lot of their uh, equipment and uh, okay. aircraft so they may they may have viewed the civil in enclave there before 2008 as a uh, something that was uh, preventing them from working faster okay so it, since it's a defense related thing maybe it's just left best left alone so there is a big huge problem that's happening low so the auto drivers are not allowing rapido two wheeler taxis to flourish in bangalore uh, so like what should be the optimal solution here so uh, all of this boils down to something that had happened i think in 2015 when the karnataka government first banned two wheeler taxis okay they had uh, said that you cannot operate a two wheeler taxi without a yellow number plate that's a commercial uh, li- uh, registration so if you l- notice uh, in uh, hyderabad you will see uh, rapidos with uh, or uber and ola equivalents with a yellow number plate even in goa two wheeler taxis you will see them with a yellow number plate so the reason why autos and even your cab drivers are opposing rapidos is because these guys have to pay extra for a commercial registration they also have to pay extra for a commercial uh, license and uh, the, the all, all of those costs are quite heavy and it, they f- feel it is unfair for a uh, someone with a whiteboard vehicle to step into their territory which may be fair uh, but basically it is they do not want the status quo to be disrupted <laughs> which is what it was the case when uh, ride sharing entered the uh, scene in the first place that your existing taxi wala especially the ones in uh, mumbai and all they were angry with uber ola and same for autos but uh, the thing is auto walas are also threatened by your uh, metro mm-hmm. they are also threatened by they their the first threat that came to them was the bmtc volvo so they are threatened whenever something new enters the market and eats into their uh, uh, earnings they feel threatened 
so you can, i can understand why they do this but the thing is at the end of the day it boils down to this when a customer wants to travel from somewhere to somewhere he and he or she approaches a auto rickshaw and auto rickshaw either says i will not come by meter quotes a higher price or flat out refuses they will turn to an alternate now that alternative may be cheaper rapido two wheelers especially are cheaper mm. so they automatically will prefer that and once you see the convenience of you know pull out a phone from your pocket book wait for him to come go down tell them the otp sit and continue rather than go to the auto stand ask them haggle with them beg them <laughs> no please come please come no i won't come okay hogala var hogala fa finally you choose to go for a rapido you are you technically are responsible in a way for this because you are refusing to go you are refusing to play with the the customer yeah. wants something but you are not bothered they will look for an alternative and they found that alternative which is okay so rapido so uh, while i guess maybe the regulatory system of them using yellow number plates versus white that is probably best left to someone who has a legal understanding of it uh auto wala should also be like reminded that hey you are responsible for this mess so pipe down okay i wouldn't say you know that they are innocent victims in this they are part of the problem everyone is part of the problem they just they feel threatened and that's where the problem starts with i know they were threatened when ola came the same they were threatened whenever something disrupts their uh, the uh, no no the normal see they will automatically do something they will react to it which is what they're doing here is just that now in some cases they get emboldened because uh, against ola at least uh, when cabs they had uh, uh, the cab drivers formed a union and mm-hmm. also there were those but against rapido as far as i know there are very few unions and all so they have the they don't have the political muscle to take on these okay. auto wallers so that is the reason why they they become easy targets we we are just 6 months away from the 2024 uh, lok sabha election. elections so when you compare the upa government and the nda government like uh, who has given more importance to infrastructure development i would say the nda government i think that's a no brainer <laughs> but uh, i would also say that uh, if you look at it uh, from a historical perspective it started with the f- f- first india government okay. so had vajpay not say started it probably i am not i don't know if any other government would have uh, taken it up okay you mean the golden quarter the golden quarter lateral the, the national highway development project that was taken up under vajpay's government had that not been uh, taken up in the first place i'm not sure if any other government even if it was a vajpay government or if it was manmohan singh's government i'm not sure they would have okay taken. like like did the upa government do anything in terms of infrastructure they did they actually did they basically continued whatever that had been initiated by the previous government and uh, they initiated the third f- fourth phases of uh, nhdp mm-hmm. which was six laning of the existing four lane corridor yeah because see to win to win the 2009 election is not an easy job like Correct. like if they had not uh, like given good infrastructure they wouldn't have won correct but most of the infrastructure that they initiated was uh, opened up only after 2009 okay 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 infrastructure that uh, especially highways that uh, and railways that were opened up before 2009 was mostly initiated in the vajpay government okay so whenever we talk about infrastructure uh, one leader that comes to my mind is mr nitin gadkari Okay. Okay. Does he live up to the hype, or is it just hype? He does live up to the hype. I've seen Gadkari. Uh, I mean, not seen him. I've seen his work, and uh, he, as someone who got a chance to, you know, like visit uh, his first ever mega project in nineteen, which was initiated in the nineteen nineties. A six-lane access-controlled expressway, concrete expressway, cutting through the Western Ghats. I got to ride the Vaipani Express the day it opened up. Okay. We had gone to Pune in the morning by the old highway, and we came back. Part of the expressway was open, and it was amazing. 
and uh, the fact that Maharashtra managed to complete that in such good time. The expressway work started around the time when the government got out of power, but the next government which came in ensured that it got completed. And uh, in today's uh, this one, uh, the Gadkari's ministry has done a good job in uh, building roads. Uh, some of they have built expressways, complete expressways in no time. Okay, now they are planning some expressway from Surat all the way the Surat to Chennai, Chennai right? economic corridor. Okay. So it's not an expressway, it's an economic corridor. Okay. So economic corridor is essentially uh, part of it is access controlled expressway, part of it is a brownfield upgrade of an existing highway. So Surat Chennai is uh, probably one of the biggest, uh, one of the most ambitious ones, which will. Uh, the longest one in India? It is the longest. Uh, or maybe second longest uh, economic corridor. I think longest would be Jamnagar Ramritsar. Okay. Mumbai Delhi is an expressway, not an economic. Okay. So, this is ambitious because it cuts through the Western Ghats between Surat and uh, Nashik. And if this is completed, it will give North Karnataka mega boost. Okay, that's a very required. Uh, not not just North Karnataka, North East Karnataka the Kalyana Karnataka region, okay. Kalburgi region and it will also ha, how will how will the Surat uh, Chennai uh, ex, it like comes corridor Surat, help, uh, Kalyan Karnataka it will provide connectivity to the ports on the east coast and the west coast okay will it travel from the Kalyan Karnataka all the like uh, Bidar, Gulbarga, Raichur will it travel it all will, three districts I'm, I don't think so because the map, entire map is not yet out. But it does uh, pass through Kalyana Karnataka. I think it goes through Bidar. Okay. And after that, it enters Telangana and then Andhra Pradesh. So uh, it will basically that whole old Hyderabad region is going to be connected. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will give better connectivity to a lot of these towns with, with each other, the ports and the larger cities in the region. So it will also help connect. Uh, uh, places with the big cities like Hyderabad, uh, Bangalore also. And it will also help uh, take away a significant load of traffic uh, from both uh, truck traffic from both Mumbai and Bangalore. So it will definitely help in uh, the fixing the traffic in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So that is one big advantage. And that is just one of the projects that uh, Karnataka is going to get now. Uh, is one more is the Bangalore Vijayawada Expressway. Okay. That will cut across uh, the Kadapa region of uh, Andhra Pradesh and go to Vijayawada. So it will bring the east coast closer to Bangalore. And uh, it will also... The only east coast uh, well connected is the Chennai region. Chennai region. Otherwise, the east coast is actually quite sparsely connected to uh, anywhere in the country, except the east coast itself. You have one coastal highway running north to south. Mm. But beyond that, uh, it's only now that Vishakhapatnam is being connected to Raipur with the expressway. Mm -hmm. Chennai with uh, through the Su Surat Expressway and uh, Bangalore Expressway. And in future, hopefully the Salem Expressway. But otherwise, the East Coast has got uh, a lot of sparse connectivity towards the interior of the country. Okay, okay. So any other big projects that the NDA, very ambitious projects that uh, the NDA government has like taken? I think the most ambitious project the India government has taken for Karnataka is the suburban rail. <laughs> Come, that, that comes to my important, very important question. What is wrong? What is wrong? And what, like, when are we getting the suburban railway? I will say we will get like it someday. Every, every budget, every budget, there are some, some thousand crores allotted to suburban railway. Like, is it really happening? Like, it is happening though. So, uh, physical work has actually started. It's visible in some areas, especially on the, uh, I have seen it on the, uh, what is it, that uh, Anikal line. Physical progress has started. The thing is, uh, because Bangalore is the last city among the big 10 big cities to which is picking up, uh, not even 10 big, the big six. Like, like Bangalore, see, like Bangalore is the f place where the electricity was first like uh, established. Such a city, it doesn't have a suburban rail network. Like, why is it so? Because it is it was always a road-based city, and now of the top six big cities in the country, 
Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad and Kolkata. Bangalore is the last one to get a suburban rail. Hyderabad mm-hmm. got it 20 years before. So they were able to build it before uh, the land acquisition became mm-hmm. a problem. Mm-hmm. So in Bangalore, the land acquisition is the primary issue. Land is expensive and also most of the lines are to uh, just you know double lines passing through the most congested part of the city so a significant part of the uh, process is to build an elevated segment okay. over the existing like can we use the existing railway stations to like uh, you can but you'll have to also you'll have to upgrade the signaling system first okay because uh, so that you can add capacities to the tracks mm-hmm. so you will there will be a lot of upgrades required you'll have to have more uh, upgrade the signal you'll have to have more t- turnouts between the lines so that trains can switch tracks you'll have to lay more uh, uh i forget the word for that uh, it's basically a extra line where uh, trains can overtake each other i okay. forget the name uh, that's that's where the accident in orissa had happened okay so you will have to upgrade a lot for uh, using the existing infrastructure but uh, because the existing lines are so congested but mm-hmm. on lines which are uh, sparsely used you can probably like the airport station was built on a line with just just a single line it's not even a double line mm-hmm. so those kind of uh, small upgrades you can do but you will need to upgrade the existing system you will also have to upgrade the uh, tracks and you will also have to build a uh, Ideally, it is better to build separate uh, platforms and separate uh, tracks. Like right now, Mumbai is building is completely uh, separate, segregating the suburban from the main line. Okay. It would be ideal to do that because then, if you can do that, you will be able to run dedicated suburban services, mm-hmm. and people will probably be happy to take it because it will be cheaper than the metro. It will be cheaper than the sub uh, BMTC buses, okay. and it still. gets you where you want to okay so like w- when can we see it up like fully operating <laughs> like i know you're not the authority to tell me but like approximately hopefully in the next uh, 8 to 10 years 10 years okay that should hopefully okay as railways as indian That's railways it. is known for being slow with some of their work okay it's like only when they have a special purpose vehicle like you know the dfcs or your high speed rail that they mm. get to work fast otherwise it's the the cheeta on the vande bharat is just the cheeta otherwise indian railways when it comes to construction I, like, is like a, is the is the vande bharat working like yes. okay the, i've taken it i've heard i've heard that due to vande bharat trains okay to maintain the proper schedule like uh, the other trains are delayed that happens with all premium trains when your rajdhani to rajdhani's the, the timings were shortened in stretches where mm-hmm. the speed upgrades were possible other trains had to slow down for that so that a lot of these problems would be solved if we uh, upgrade the signaling system okay so once you move towards automatic signaling like either cbtc or uh, the european train uh, signaling system mm mm-hmm. ha ETCS we can easily bring down the travel times because then your tracks will be uh, cut into smaller uh, units mm-hmm. and uh, each of these units will send function independently so you can run more trains on the same set of tracks anything else you want biggest single biggest challenge towards traffic and accidents and everything in bangalore what is it the people the people have to, there has to be a mindset change there has to be more discipline mm-hmm. people have to drive like in, how do you how do you expect there are people from up coming and uh, like there are people coming from, from all over all the country over the country and so not, this, not exactly a, this is this is a problem that the government of karnataka alone cannot solve it is a problem that the central government will have to take up a pan india thing uh so uh, So one thing is uh, the, the Center of Excellence for Road Safety at IIT Madras uh, under Professor Venkatesh Balasubramanian developed this uh, system called uh, three gate licensing. Okay. A person is uh, has to go through some mandatory training starting with uh, what do you call it uh, theoretical training and then through a simulator based process 
before they can find they have to clear each level uh with a good score before they reach the final level where they can test it on uh, test their skills on the road you mean the drivers the drivers before okay so they have to clear the third gate before they can get their license now this okay then why why why, are, why is the rto not to uh, integrating these tests it's into still, their it's tests. still it's still a work in progress but uh what uh, has happened is uh, so using the simulator based program around 2000 uh, drivers of school and college buses in chennai were uh, trained as uh, uh, part of this program and uh, in the process uh, there are lots of interesting discoveries you will come across but the beauty of this was when you go and train these uh, drivers of school and college buses who's uh, you know they act as influencers for the people around them who are young children mm-hmm. so yes, when young children see people driving safely driving with discipline automatically that you know that sort of like goes into their mind you know passively sitting there mm-hmm. subconsciously so eventually at a later stage when they themselves become drivers that will be there at the back of their head so they will make in the long you run i think a child will be like thinking about all this yes yes definitely we we, we it may not be consciously there but subconsciously it will be there at the back of their heads oh okay. fair because when you grow up watching something repetitively it will stick to you okay. a lot of our actions are similar to what our parents did right so similarly you see what your school bus driver does every day for a year then see another driver do the same thing for another year like that it goes on you will imbibe parts of it no so yeah. the thing is to get one set of people to start driving you know better slowly start influencing the greater population to drive better okay because once you have disciplined driving your roads will be safer there will be less congestion there will be less deadlock happening on the roads mm-hmm. because a lot of these problems happen because one person drives rashly mm-hmm. and the other person does not have the same reaction time mm-hmm. that's it so if everyone has uniform driving skills we we'll go a long way in solving the problem so people is the biggest problem <laughs> and anyway, you yourself are responsible for the traffic congestion so okay drive in a observe lane discipline don't overtake okay. from the wrong side okay and uh don't try to fit into a gap where you shouldn't be fitting in okay and if you see a red signal stop red means stop green means go yellow means be cautious but don't go okay this is your message to the people who traffic shame bangaloreans yes <laughs> i used to be very very pessimistic about bangalore at one point but uh off late my optimism has gone up for some reason okay but i still have a lot of faith in bangalore it's the end of the day it's my second home so i have a lot of faith in the city so yeah okay so la- my last question like is there any uh law or uh, regulation for jay walking like people just they walk like like can a traffic police uh, uh actually stop people from jay walking is there a jay walking law in india i i have actually never uh, paid attention to this because yeah so it is yeah it is not part of the motor vehicles act mm-hmm. it is it is mentioned in obstruction of traffic in certain laws like the bombay police act or the okay karnataka police act it's part of that okay but uh, otherwise it's not part of the motor vehicles act or it's not part of any uh, uh, tra- large mm-hmm. transport act so but i think it, it if there is no legal provision for it they won't be able to challenge you so if you get challenged for jay walking mm-hmm. the challan will have to mention under which law which law and if it doesn't you can then contest it in court simple actually even if it does you technically can contest anything in court <laughs> whether or not it works out in your favor is another thing okay are there any laws that needs to be re- repealed uh, like uh, to ease out traffic congestion probably certain sections of the motor vehicles law which uh, talks of which especially the ones that distinguishes between stage carriers and contract carriages okay. state carriages and contract carriages because this is the same law that uh, uh, every government used 5 years ago to ban carpooling services mm-hmm. 
and there's also again now the same problem is starting now carpooling uh, is being cracked down upon mm-hmm. so uh certain laws uh, there the law may not be is not necessary to be uh, amended but uh, certain interpretations of it may be i guess will have to be amended okay. we'll have to talk to a lawyer about that okay thank you shrikant thanks shrikant <laughs> <laughs> so anyway we'll have uh, more more discussions in in the coming days okay uh, let me know whenever you are in bangalore we'll we'll definitely i i love talking to you on infrastructure like i think uh, you are one of the uh, one of the best uh, experts in south india i won't call myself an expert it's uh-huh. just that i've got a lot of experience traveling in uh, multiple cities okay. so okay and okay. because i have an interest in transport it mm-hmm. i tend to observe it more keenly that's all yeah okay but i'm not an expert by any means <laughs> no you're being modest yeah okay <laughs> anyway thank you thank you thanks for being here thank you for having me here